Salam Salam. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back again today, guys. Today we're going to be talking about Emperor Johannes IV. Emperor Johannes, also known by his birth name of Casa Marcha, was born in the northern region of Tengre in Ethiopia in 1837. Emperor Johannes was born into a noble family and he had a brother and a sister. Not much is known about his earlier life, but we can look into his quest to be the emperor of Ethiopia. Before Emperor Johannes IV, Emperor Tedros would rise to power of the country during a time period known as Zema Nima Safant, or the Era of Princes, in 1769. This time period would see a prince from the north murder the current emperor in which started the Era of Princes. In this era, princes gained more power than the emperor and actually started to install or appoint the next emperor. Even though they had the true power, they would constantly change the king emperor. Emperor Tedros would rise out of this hectic era, losing his father and growing up in Gondor with his mother. His half-brother was famous for fighting off Egyptians and Tedros would feel as if his brother's land should be left to him. His brother wanted to leave his land to his kids, but neither got what they wanted. Once his brother died, the empress would take the land and this is when Tedros would become a rebel. He would eventually build an army, but then lost a battle to the Egyptians. The Egyptians had discipline and firearms over Tedros. He would then build up his army once more, but this would concern the powerful lords under Empress Menon. The lords would give Tedros a small land, but eventually he was dissatisfied with that. Tedros would then go to battle and kill all the lords, face the empress's son Ras Ali in battle and won, and captured the puppet emperor Johannes III and Empress Menon. Through the head of the Orthodox Church, he would be made Emperor Tedros II, King of Kings of Ethiopia. He would also end slavery and found his wealth through the church. Emperor Tedros would be killed by the British due to Emperor Tedros wanting to advance his military. He requested from the British engineers to help build weapons in an artillery factory. The British would send some engineers, but the emperor was not happy with their skill, so he would force them to build him a huge cannon. He would then imprison the engineers. With this action and further emphasis on his total rule over the country and regional lords, this would be his downfall. His more violent methods against the princes of the past and lords of the time would prove his grasp to power would be tested. The British would send 32,000 troops to free the imprisoned British. Another fatal blow would be his supporters and opponents would leave the door open for the British to come in. As the British after two days overwhelmed his forces and started to push into his fortress, the cannon made for the emperor would be used. This last attempt would not work as the cannon misfunctioned and Emperor Tedros killed himself before the British reached him. Casa Mercha would help with Emperor Tedros's downfall. For striking a deal with the British, he would receive guns. In return, he did not, at the time, interfere. This would be the start of a three-way battle for who would be the next emperor of Ethiopia. Wakshan Gabaza of Lasta, who was Emperor Tedros's opponent, would move strongly to take the title after Tedros' death. Menelik of Showa, who was freed from being a prisoner of Tedros, would take over the south of Ethiopia. Kasamucha would also try to become emperor from the north. Wakshan Gabazar of Lasta would strike a deal with Menelik. In this deal, he would give him land in southern Ethiopia. Menelik would accept this offer. After this, Wakshan would coordinate himself as Emperor Tekla Gergis. After making himself emperor, he tried to make the same deal with Kasamurcha, 
but Casa did not take this deal. This would lead to a battle in 1872, in which Emperor Tekla Gergis would lose to Casa Murcha. Casa Murcha would defeat the emperor with only 12,000 soldiers and guns he acquired from the British. With firepower, this would defeat the emperor's 60,000 troops. Casa Murcha would become Emperor Johannes IV and move his capital within Ethiopia. He was known to be a nationalist and wanted to unite and make better all of Ethiopia. He was a very good military strategist, was a strict Christian, and was diplomatic. His rule, to some, was not received with well arms though. The Muslim population under his rule either had to convert to being Christians or be forced to lose their lands. Some nobility would flee their lands while others would convert to keep it. Johannes also established the Council of Borumeira. This council would put an end to the division within the Orthodox Church. The Tejado Orthodox Church would now be the only doctrine. Johannes would also give power to regional lords versus taking it all away. Soon after, the Egyptian military would want to expand into Ethiopia. The ruler at the time, Khedive Ismail, was part of the Ottoman Empire. This was during the time that the country of Egypt was under Ottoman rule. Egypt for some time under the Ottoman Empire would be a tributary country or state to the empire. Ismail would have ambitions to take over all of North Africa and southward into Sudan and Ethiopia. Ismail would put Egypt into more debt due to his expansion and training for his troops from the European countries. Ismail would be backed by the British due to the British having many investments in Egypt. Johannes, aware of this, would reach out to the British in which he had a deal with in the past. Reaching out to European countries, he would suggest that they should help them because Ethiopia and the United Kingdom were both Christian countries. No European countries, including the British, would aid Ethiopia. In 1875, the Egyptians would advance into Ethiopia. The British would let the Egyptians control Lake Tana, part of the Nile River, and then occupy different Ethiopian northern regions. That same year in 1875, Emperor Johannes IV would go to the north and call for troops. 20,000 men would come to his aid and march to Gundet. 2,000 Egyptian men would also advance to Gundet. As the Egyptian men met a small Ethiopian force in the valley, Emperor Johannes would have the rest of his army on the valley mountaintops. He would then tell his soldiers to fire, and Emperor Johannes' forces almost wiped out the Egyptian forces. In 1876, the Egyptians would come back with 15,000 troops in the Battle of Gudra. Emperor Johannes would win this battle as well, though there were way more Ethiopians that died in this battle. The Egyptians would then retreat, and a treaty would be presented. This treaty would give the northern lands back to Ethiopia. Unfortunately, as one invader left, another invader arose. The Italians would land on Ethiopia's northern borders. Conflict would start soon after when one of Emperor Johannes' governors attacked the Italians. The Italians would claim that the war was not provoked, yet they moved aggressively in the northern part of Ethiopia. After this battle, Emperor Johannes wrote to European leaders to try to cool down the conflict. The Mahadis movement in Sudan would also start to take place. This movement was partly religious and partly freedom from Egypt's occupation. As Egypt tried to take Ethiopia in the past, it started by trying to take Sudan. The Mahadis were focused on attacking the Egyptians, but Emperor Johannes had signed a treaty with the British. The treaty would give the Egyptians safe patches through Ethiopia due to the agreement with the British. This honoring of the Heywut Treaty by Johannes would now make Ethiopia an enemy of the Mahadis of Sudan. The Mahadis' biggest battle with Ethiopia was at Matama. 
Johannes would send Tekla Imanut. Tekla Imanut would take his army to Matama to attack the Sudan Mahadis. He would take Matama, but only one year later, he would lose it. The Mahadis would advance inland and destroy the city of Gander. After this event, Johannes had more internal problems to worry about while fighting the Mahadis. Menelik from the south and Tekla Menut from the west would go against the emperor for power of Ethiopia. Emperor Johannes would go after Tekla Imanut first and won the battle. Menelik would start to receive guns from the Italians and prepare for Emperor Johannes' attack. The emperor would wait on attacking Menelik and instead attack the Mahadis from Sudan. This move would be his last, as Emperor Johannes was wounded by a sniper. Emperor Johannes would die the following day in his tent on the battlefield. Before he passed away, he would name his son to be the next emperor, but many would disagree. At the same time, his son's nephew also tried to claim the throne. Many would agree and disagree among the nobles. Once word of the emperor's death reached his whole army, the morale dropped and gave the Mahadis the chance to come back. The Ethiopian forces would be scattered. The Italians were still to the north, and after the emperor's death, the Italians would start to take over. Menelik II would rise to power to become the emperor of Ethiopia. Emperor Johannes tried to unify the country of Ethiopia after the former emperor Tedros started this endeavor. He is very well known in Ethiopia and celebrated by many Ethiopians. To be fair, we must note that some Ethiopians from different backgrounds might not agree. There is always two views or two sides of the coin. There are around 86 different peoples or tribes in Ethiopia. Understanding the unification of a country while also appreciating the faults and downfalls and successes of all people is very important to understanding and moving forward. Ethiopia had many emperors, kings, and princes. This country's history is so vast and so long that I will try my best to cover all of it in a cohesive manner. I already have videos on ancient Ethiopian empires, kingdoms, and figures, so please go check them out. Also, go check out my new NFT. It is a NFT online collectible art, and it goes by Diaspora. It will be 1001 of African or Afro diaspora inspired art collectible art and so you can purchase it you can buy it if you go down in the description you will see it on a website called mintable and you can buy it if you desire so guys until next time please like subscribe turn on the bell notification make sure you subscribe to the channel to get more videos and also add me on all social medias which is africa network which is instagram twitter soundcloud snapchat facebook tiktok each one teach one always love each other always learn from each other until next time guys Peace to Ethiopia, we will move forward. One love.